Why? Because we're going to watch Song of Conquest. Don't ask questions. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Apologies for the delays. Mm. I've been busy bone mashing for the past few weeks. What? Uh, look it up. I really don't what think I need to explain myself or why gently hammering my chin and cheeks will eventually mold my natural skull to that of a Cro-Magnon grug. Uh, what? N no! What? Hitting yourself. I ain't gonna question it. I ain't even gonna ask. So, uh, you. I think your head with a hammer does not... Listen, I've like, been listening to Alpha... You're, it's not like you're cutting away at marble. You can't just hit something Podcasts. with a chisel. And according to men, talking to other men, women desire nothing more than a man that looks like Australopithecus. But between my transformation I, I, of mind no. and body, I've been playing something real good. Songs of Conquest is a okay. turn-based home-like, a genre which currently has four games in it. And that... Huh. That's including Heroes 6 and 7. Songs of Conquest is a spiritual successor to Heroes of Might and Magic. Honestly, as someone that loves RTSs and, you know, strategy turn-based games, even though I am terrible at them for the most part, it's still very nice to hear about them and more game made because, you know, bigger companies don't make this kind of thing, obviously. <sighs> right. They're all too busy with their microtransactions. And it's a damn good one, which means I am spiritually contracted by the laws of the greater universe, by the creator sons who built this plane of Eurasia to see this game financially prosper. Ooh. Remember, in this life, I am nothing but the mouthpiece of Moloch. I'm what? just here to tell you what to consume. I like my games like I, I like don't... my women. A famous YouTuber once told me uh. while driving past the local kindergarten, early access. This is not... What the hell? Oh, that was a really bad joke. Good lord. <laughs> that was... That was a that really, was, really bad joke. I think that was Mandalore. Was that supposed to be Mandalore? I'm pretty sure. And, uh... Yeah. Not a joke. It's a cry for help. Ever what? since the gold play button arrived, I've realized I'm in a den of predators. And there's oh. a hierarchy. Every blood moon, we have to offer the vitae of a child. To Mr. Beast. If you refuse to comply, <laughs> UMG will copy strike all your videos. What and I hell? really need that AdSense money. Songs of Conquest is early access. Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what this guy would happen, but I honestly think I should probably eventually look up that one deity that uh, he said that he worships now for. Just to learn what the hell he's talking about somewhat. Probably. Probably. Technically, it's completely functional and has more than enough content Ooh, cool to justify undead. the price tag, which is ironic because I didn't pay for it. Gameplay. Oh. Because I've played so much Heroes, I do Frogs. primarily talk about this game in comparison to Heroes of Might and Magic. So, what's in common? It's a turn-based fantasy strategy where each player owns a number of heroes with a limited number of moves per turn. They can be okay. used to fight monsters, take resources, and upgrade towns to fill their ranks with more powerful units. The objective is to defeat every Every other player differences there's no overland Over. spells thank god because i'm tired of living in a world with town portals and dimension doors where oh. a single man can simultaneously defend every town on the map yet lives in perpetual fear <laughs> of a dungeon player who depending on rng has both a movement points and mana to dimension door across the entire map and that sounds like pure diarrhea and all sorts of ways of cheating and messing with you <laughs> i do not like the words of any of that because it reminds me of the BS I've been trying to go through, where for some reason the AI always has giant armies. Why don't I have a giant army AI? Or game? Take every single town you own in a single turn. I find this entertaining, engaging, mm. dopaminergic. And to the person who inflicted this upon me after a four-hour game, I wish you a very pleasant... A four-hour game. Instead of heroes... Wait, what well. the heck did he just say? I wish you a very pleasant... Retrograde ejaculation instead of what does that even mean? I don't know, I really don't. I don't want to know. Okay, Heroes, they're called welders. Welders are attuned okay. to essence, the magic of this world. Every unit generates a unique type and quantity of essence when their turn okay. begins, adding to the welder's total. You have one spell book containing every spell that might sound underwhelming until you realize. I never said anything about casting one spell. Oh. You can cast 
every spell multiple times and they stack how many spells can you cast in a single turn infinite your only limitation is imagination and of course the amount of essence you possess so you can start spamming spells like merlin has a week to live dear god uh let's feel like it can be abused a lot if you know what you're doing Combat is effectively a chessboard, sure except my queen gets well. 10 consecutive moves because I collected 21 yellows and well. towns are no longer a single screen. There are actual towns surrounded by external buildings. These are modular. You can. I will say, no matter what about this game that says, says the sprite work is amazing. Mm -hmm. They are so incredibly detailed. Build whatever you want, provided you've got the space for it. Unlike heroes, where units are produced in bulk at the start of each week, here you it's produce okay. a constant supply every day. This uh, takes a bit of getting used to, but the logic is uh, you get to see an immediate return on your investment. That's very nice. As opposed to seven days. And because build sites are modular, there's nothing stopping us from building six rat warrens at the same time and dedicating ourselves to oh, that's a big rat based experience. Generally, you produce. I didn't know rats could get that big. What the hell? more than you have actual money to buy Rats economy is are important. magic they're not that magic all I know. except Period. for skaven Generally, they're magic you rats it's more than you have actual money to buy economy is important and we must increase our gdp for this reason okay. half the towns i conquer out of necessity will become plantations yes <laughs> it's a fantasy military campaign and you know what it still runs on corn. Also, I have found I mean, all the corn can feed a lot of people. Cannot be found. So I have to build markets, and then I have to build more markets to offset the horrible exchange. It's true. One corn can I feed at least afford. fifty hundred people. No. What? Really? more markets to offset the horrible exchange rate because i cannot afford to buy lean rock at such prices Conquer okay it, so another faction gives you basically he's messing with the economy to get lower prices several options raise it to the ground and rebuild as your own convert the town which replaces each building with your respective faction equivalent okay. or occupy the town which means you keep it intact you can't do anything with it but for every turn it's occupied you generate an obscene amount of money in case you haven't figured it out you can't mix races uh. i'm sorry that that doesn't sound very good. You can't mix different factions in this game. Some might be upset about this, but there's a very simple explanation. I mean, that seems overall fine. I play Total Warhammer 2, and we usually don't mix different, well, factions for the most part. Also, this is giving me a bit of Total Warhammer vibe at the very least. Each of the four uh -huh. races generate very different types of essence. If you could mix uh -huh. and match, you would have access to the strongest spell combinations in the game. Okay, so each unit generates essence for you, and they each generate a specific essence which you can use to fire back at the which, enemy. by design, are intentionally difficult to obtain. Combat is very similar to heroes. If you're not familiar, each unit is called a stack. The number represents how many identical- I am loving some of these undead designs, though. Cool units are in- I don't know what it is about, but I just like- Armored, unde cool looking undead. Side that stack. For example, these are ducks. That's, that's a, a league. Stack of seven ducks, but I. League? That's illegal. Oh. No. Anyway, he's talking about stacks. That stack. For example, these are ducks. They are a stack of seven ducks, but I can okay. split them into seven stacks of one duck. Does that make sense? Either way, I can't hear you, so I'm going <laughs> to continue. Depending on the command ability of your welder, your army contains between three to nine stacks. Unlike okay. yours, your stack has a maximum size depending on the unit. This is so you actually play the game instead of playing Necropolis, which involves waiting inside your base until the numbers get so high they <laughs> stop rendering. I'll never forget the tactical genius of telling all my units to wait only for my Brazilian opponent to match my strategic power by making all of his units wait, which put us right back to the beginning as if nothing ever happened. Oh Delaying your turn to bait out the enemy, thankfully, is no longer an option. Every unit now has a zone of control, meaning if you enter any of these surrounding hexagons, you can't leave or pass without provoking an attack of opportunity. Consequently, Okay, so there's a bit of D and... Well, not really D and D, that's attack of opportunity. 
versatility, I think, might have been a thing before D&D, but either Your way. opponent's backline is guaranteed death for his ranged units. Conversely, ranged okay. units benefit from high elevation. The higher you are, the bigger your range, and the harder it is for melee units to reach you. Compared Makes to sense. Zeros, unit upgrades are very pricey. However, the upgraded form of every unit is a, about a two-fold power difference, which doesn't account oh. for all the abilities they receive. These range from game-changing to... I'm going to play the bagpipes. Currently, there's four races to play. Arleon, Rana, Baria, and the Barony of Law. Arleon is post-collapse Rome, a formerly dominant empire carved ah. up by barons and feudal lords, trying desperately to hold on to the status quo. Whoa. That is... So, is it like... So I guess that's basically the Byzantine Empire, more or less. Oh, Fable's gone. I don't know where Fable went, but he's been having trouble with Discord. So, sorry everyone. We'll see if he comes back. Rome allied itself with the entire furry community. Honestly, I kind of get it. What? Imagine uh, you were an explorer, and you stumble upon this isolated village inside... This score's being weird. I uh, have to run to the bathroom. Oh, okay, Fable. ...the Amazon, consisting entirely of Crystal the Fox, but there's no males. What? So, uh, you gotta do your part. You gotta turn those woodland creatures into woodland Twinkies, because... No! 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 If you don't, they won't survive. Barya is uh, literally the Merchants Guild. They're a federation of technologically advanced merchant states mm. who uh, also engage in a little slavery. Which oh is, uh, unfortunately, where the comparison ends. Because uh, we've never owned slaves. I actually asked my relatives. And technically, what we had would be referred to as serfs. Rana represent... Indentured servants, basically. Oh my god. The scaly, the frogs, and everything else that comes out of a swamp. Typically, if you okay. have more than four limbs, you get to be part of Rana. Enslaved and abused for generations, their natural response, understandably, is to murder everyone. Fine. I mean, they're revolting against their former oppressors, so yeah, I can see that. We've got the Barony of Law, a breakaway faction of Arleon. The only difference? Necromancy. They're trying oh. to bring back the good old days by raising them from the dead. For <laughs> reference, one of their basic units is a loyal soldier brought back from the dead. Okay. Their strongest is several soldiers buried close together. So oh. when resurrected, they fuse together into a giant lump. And I do love giant ghost armor things, and that looks really cool. When resurrected, they fuse together into a giant lump. And that's about it for gameplay. There's I do like that giant turtle man, though. And cities to plunder. Pretty much the quintessential hero's experience. This game can be played both on and offline. Single okay. player and multi. It's not that's very clear, nice. but you can actually hot seat this game. As in, uh, play with two people on the same computer. All you have to do is tag yourself in for two slots when starting the map. There's currently no mechanic oh. to hide the screen between turns. So I recommend putting a blanket over <laughs> it before you press enter. Turn. Still, there's no guarantee people won't try to peek, which is why I record the entire session on a USB camera. Wow. My house is a very fun place. Hey, Seth, why <laughs> is there a proximity sensor? Good question. Why is there a movement at three in the morning? There's what the hell? <laughs> He's like buoy trapped his entire house. Also, a map editor, and it's very good. You can do a lot of complex I'm back. events without. Welcome back. To we were just talking about the furry community in the game. I don't know what's going on with my Discord. It's really stupid. Also, also the furry community. What? Apparently, one of the factions is literally the Roman Empire has united with the furry community. And then he started talking about Crystal the Fox for some reason, and then I kind of, kind of looked away. Yeah, no, that's sadly she, Renamon, and some other random lady I don't know about are like the default furry ladies, and it's just like, yeah, that's sad. Yeah, unfortunately, Fable can't find any of his redheads. I will fight you. <laughs> I will actively fight you, mister. That YouTube, he is mean to me. You all don't understand, he bullies me. I, I, I cry every time. No, you don't. We're fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. We'll just Everything's give... not fine. He's lying. We'll just give Fable a pat on the head and move forward. And also, one of the groups is uh, apparently a breakaway faction that uses basically necromancy. Understand the code behind it. Conversely, right. for the Heroes 5 video, I had to learn a scripting language just to make a 10 second joke. Finally, wow. there's the single player campaign, which just leads to us to the story. Story. <laughs> story. There's really currently really two campaigns, Arleon and Rana, each consisting My phone of suddenly turned on. What are you doing, phone? Give me one second. What the hell video was it playing? 
Okay, it was playing something. Uh, I'm gonna put this away. Be fooled. These are single player Honestly, campaigns. Honestly, I'll, I'll give uh, the story. I'll give Seth credit if he's willing to learn this a uh, programming script just to make a 10 second joke. Jesus Christ, talk about dedication. I wish I had that kind of dedication. Story. Which I do oh, have yeah, dedication no. to my comics, but it's just they're going so slow and I want them to go fast. There's currently two campaigns, Arleon and Rana, each consisting of four different missions. Do not be fooled. These oh. are deceptively long and take a while to finish. The Arleon campaign is a good introduction to the game. It shows you the ropes and helps you understand the core concepts. Okay. However, your main character, Cecilia, is a unit-focused welder, so you won't get a super deep appreciation of the essence system until you've had more time to play around with it. She's not a spellcaster, so you won't get access to better uh. spells unless you know exactly how to level up and tilt the skill priority. And for the record, I don't think most people playing right now even realize you can do that. So unless Probably. you know exactly what you're doing, which, spoiler, you don't, you're going to have a mixed experience. That's because you'll mostly have order essence, which is very buff heavy, but it's not spectacular. And you don't okay. have it leveled up, so you won't even get to see its full potential. It's a mild complaint, and you can fix it by playing Verona campaign. At the end oh, of the yes. season, you are These reward. are basically frogmen and scaly people that have revolted because they are former slaves. Oh. Did you hear that, Fable? Uh, no. Uh... Oh my god. They are frogmen and scaly people that have revolted because they are former slaves breaking away. With uh, singing. I'll be honest, uh, I skipped this in the beginning because I felt uh -huh. secondhand embarrassment, uh, but eventually I grew to like it and just embraced the experience. I thought about it. The bards of yesterday are pretty much the SoundCloud rappers of today. So why what? did I produce such an automatic, visceral response? Maybe the Zoomer population could relate a little more. Maybe if uh, every mission hell? was concluded uh, with a short performance by the uh, prodigious Lil Yachty. Maybe no. the eventual Barony of Loth campaign I, I kind of take offense into the fact that he said bards were um, the SoundCloud rappers because a lot of SoundCloud rappers are actually trash and bards... Did it, they, they weren't the best, but they weren't on that level of bad. Good lord. Oh. The XXX Tentacion, which would be fitting because, you know, oh. they're undead. And he is, um, oh. similar. Right now, the game is always changing. Bad, 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 no. Bad, 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 very bad, very, very bad, sir. Nerfing some very, very bad. <laughs> usually the core of my week nerfing some kind of exploit which was oh. usually the core of my strategy so i'm forced to make this review even faster to try and outpace the balance team i'm obviously God using damn. a plural but i know who you are carl listen i'm just a young blood trying to make it in the projects i'm raised on a oh staple diet of oatmeal and uh ironic webms of anime girls about to undress where in the last second they pull a bait and switch on uh. swapping to animated footage of african-american men reflecting shower water using their developed glutes but what the you hell gotta keep a brother down when you capped essence generation to six a unit why you got to do this to me he's doing this quicker than i can write the script and no oh well, goddamn i'm going to correct myself i'm just going to photoshop over it and pretend it still works <laughs> section three abusing the game the following is an unsorted list of things i uh, I just know Seth likes abusing games. Things so. I've discovered. Spells. Spells are interesting. Spells can be stacked for great effect. For example, okay. knights have the ability to charge. For every tile they cross, they deal more damage. But if you cast Quicken and stack it repeatedly, they can run back and forth across the entire battlefield several oh. times over until finally they collide with the enemy. Pacify a monster. Do it twice. Whatever damage it used to do, it doesn't. And now can be safely beaten to death using string instruments. Charge <laughs> Essence allows a necromancer to generate his essence twice per turn. Strengthen oh, no. Essence allows any unit generating essence to generate even more. Oh, da, damn. Strengthen Essence twice on free necromancers gives you 36 balls worth of arcane and destruction. That and sounds terrifying. And two fireballs every turn. Or you can repel him five times. The displacement may be physical, but the damage is psychological. I found out repel also works on your units. This enables us to perform drive-bys. <laughs> You know, what else works on your units? Blood boil. Wait, what's this? A rat go berserk when injured, doing double damage? Very curious. Blind hatred makes a unit randomly attack another. At max level, this happens three times. 
in sequence. Oh. So we force the militia to attack a horned one. The horned one berserks, one shots the militia and everyone around it. You can cast this on so your own. So he casts it well. on. Oh, he casts it on the oh, high legion into enemy ranks. By the way, legion attacks cleave through enemies into adjacent targets. Cast blind hatred. Watch as they peel everyone around them like a potato, and then continue your turn because that didn't count as an attack. Oh if my that god, is unfair, that is me, horrible. You can take three stacks of dragons, take Jesus. three turns, and then cast rejuvenate to get six turns, and then cast mist on them, turning them invincible until the next turn. This doesn't Dear affect god. you because they're faster than everyone else which puts you in an infinite loop where you can attack the enemy and turn invincible before he can ever respond every single that turn, is dirty so many dragons you're building tall so i cast justice which kills nine of a stack regardless of what they are each time i cast oh, that spell no. you lose 30k which makes you rather upset so you patch it the next day whatever am i going what to cast that spell you lose 30k i want to see what it's saying you... change your spell to no longer affect Oh, they changed Rather several upset. of them. So you patch it the next day. Whatever am I going to do? Oh, um, that's right. I'll just cast it again. Alternatively, take advantage of the essence system to build wide. And I'll just cast every army it again. With a one stack. <laughs> Pretty much. Dear God, Seth. Good idea, but you're not the first. He refuses to accept defeat. Yes, he, he refuses to accept defeat by <laughs> the freaking <laughs> balance team. Essentially, each time you kill a stack, everyone on your team does more damage, but they also take less damage. For this reason, losing several units in a row quickly spirals out of control and may cost you the entire fight. Ignore my advice, continue to one stack. Have your oh. opponent cast Apocalypse on your ass. Realize in that moment his welder has Essence Leech. Watch as your essence gets stolen, oh. multiplied by three, and used against you. Going wide isn't bad, as per se, but there's more interesting ways to do it. Sacrifice nine stacks of Blessed Bones to make nine stacks of skeletons to generate oh, 18 units worth of essence. Then do it again to make 27. Paint the map. That is just a horrible no horde of monsters space. coming at you right there. When walking is no longer an option. When the concept of moving forward implies we can burn it quicker than it grows. Earth block is a great spell. So great, in fact, that nobody could invade towns anymore. Melee units would desperately tunnel through the jungle, dying from 10 billion trillion arrows before they even got close. According to the patch notes, they fixed it what does that mean absolutely nothing because oh i'm still doing it in this game oh my god are less of an obligation and more of a rough guideline what? which i've chosen to ignore i don't need to explain how a cannon which normally has to reload between shots can fire the same cannonball 10 times in a row but if you stack multi-attack on a hell breath anything is possible dear Spells god have a lot of fine print for example rapid fire gives every ranged unit an extra attack but it's not based on the unit's turn it's based on the the entire round. Oh no! <laughs> So three different units shoot six times, but because it's still the same round, we cast Rejuvenate and shoot 12 times. I love this game. Swap is a very versatile spell. What's that? A tightly knit circle of spellcasters? Allow me to swap in my hyena with his mage, leaving his forces with no option but to kill themselves because a hyena retaliates first and has infinite retaliation. Dear God! Defending against a siege, decide that I want my ballistas even closer. His strongest unit is now at the top of my tower, so I fence him off into a little playpen. Bad smell gas. A leading cause of <laughs> brap related mortality. Swapping two units inside a cloud of gamer girl miasma makes them gag all over again. Forever. Oh. Until their nostrils bleed he and their organs are using the out of crap me. out of this. Yes, he's abusing. <laughs> he's abusing every little thing he can think of. Proceed to escape this mustard hell. I know my imagery is evocative, but for the record, I'm not into this. I have uh. a flowery imagination, and uh, I'm an empath, which means what? even if I'm not a brat fag, I you are not an empath. No, you are not. No, he's not. What the hell is that? Movies. I don't want to know, it's actually. to change the topic. The most ridiculous swap I've ever done is with an artificer. Place a landmine oh. directly in front of him. Target an enemy on the same okay. lane and swap him out. The landmine is now directly behind the enemy. Cast repel and watch them forcibly... God oh damn! Oh my god! For some reason, repelling yeah. people into traps applies the damage twice. Holy <laughs> <laughs> hell! Jesus. Yeah, 
Right. I am so far gone. I don't even know where exploits begin and mechanics end. Case in point, normally it takes a while gone to off get the your deep end. rolling and producing troops. But when you recruit a welder, they spawn with some units already. Now, okay. if you dismiss them, they disappear from the game, but they can be rehired with the same starting units. So oh. right from the start, we print a bunch of high-end units, steamroll through the early turns, and pay off our investment. This is, objectively, the best way to play, as according to my subjective feelings. Then, I wonder to myself, could I abuse <laughs> the hire and dismiss mechanic even more? Of course oh, I did. No. Why else would I write this? There's a very interesting skill in this game called Tutor. When two friendly welders interact, max level Tutor grants 75% of a Tutor's total experience to the other welder. Oh, god at, uh, damn. No cost. When welders level up, they get offered skills. Depending on your choices, you get offered a different so, power at levels I, I think he power games or something. I mean, he must have a lot of free time. Goodness but, gracious. Between editing videos and just playing the games, I don't know how else he would do it, to be completely honest. 16. Paired with a high-level tutor, I have used this to train eight different welders in the blink of an eye. We Holy cow. We skills with combat and magic. We take only miscellaneous passive income. So, when we hit level 8, we get access to levy, which means at level 16, we get the upgrade. Rank 2 levy is a power that grants you a global 60% increase in unit production. Multiplied Holy by hell. eight welders and rounded up, that's 500% more dragon every turn. That's six dragons a day. It's actually insane. Alternatively, that is insane. your opponent is running a counter to your build so you build the counter to his counter except in your case it takes you five seconds to counter his entire game or you oh realize my God. you can't <laughs> win a fair fight that is but who said we had to fight fair we're going to win by losing and they're going to lose by winning we what? train up a bunch of welders to get the first turn we nuke the field we kill units many times our value and then we die and then we do it again and again until oh so he's no playing the attrition game basically He's slowing them down and Jeez. just causing heavy losses on their side. With which to fight. At which point, I start Jesus to mock them. Christ. I call them gay and uh, immediately apologize. Unless <laughs> they identify with that label. In which case, I send a little kiss, you know, to establish dominance. What? I told you, a lot of abuse. But I'll the strongest <laughs> tactic in this game the is uh, just play Rana. All the about? Rana initiative upgrades, prepared level 3 and eager level 2, what results the in the highest possible initiative about? in the entire I game. Know. There is no counterplay because... You you don't get to play, you just get to watch. As Sun Tzu famously said, when two men sword fight in the shower, the winner strikes first. At the end of the day, no. balance. I don't give a shit. He because never said that. He has command, never said that. No. Funny enough, I did learn that Sun Tzu might have not just been one person, but a collection of people writing the book. Yours multiplayer. And guess what? It sucks. Sense. There's very little dopamine to be had. From as much as online. one person can be a, strat a strategist, you also need ideas from other people. True. Here it's so a I lot assume better. he probably talked to others. Mm -hmm. Go faster, you fight quicker, and more Jeez. often. You have to carve a path yeah. up to your enemy and manage supply lines. You don't just win out of the blue without some foreshadowing or momentum. Based on the title, you would expect some good music, and you'd be correct. I think okay. the music is generally fantastic, but the Arleon and Frog tracks have a particular nest in my heart. The amount of sprite work done for this game is absolutely insane. Yeah, I gotta agree with him on that. The amount of sprite work is insane. It shows me just how great... Oh, God, that scared me. Sorry about that, you're saying? The amount of sprite work, this just shows me how good sprites can actually be when someone puts in that amount of effort in them. When I yeah. realized they just made a unique sprite the for every welder, to put in the proper work. Wait, 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 wait. What did he just say? In my heart, the amount of sprite work done for this game is absolutely insane. When I realized they made a unique sprite for every welder, that there's nine per faction, so they had to make 36 of them, I felt pretty humble. All God damn! You that many unique sprites just for... God damn. Anyway, what did you say, Fable? Fable is dead now. All anyway. the sprites and all the animations are beautiful. It's generally just a beautiful game. In summary, the world is incredibly starved for games like Songs of Conquest, and I'm gonna shill it as hard as I can. You shill it as hard as you can, because we need more games like this in general. Not the ones, you know, made by companies, but you know, we need more games than this. Or, for as long as my attention span holds. <laughs> 
I'm such a Gemini. Why? Because it represents uh. a return to the 2000s, where products had long-term appeal and complexity, where some respect was given to the temporary, finite human experience which yearns for cognition and introspection. If you don't believe me, imagine releasing the ancient game of Mahjong as- Is not wrong in that games don't- Well, there are games made to be- Played for long periods of time, they're usually made. Oh, you have to buy the next expansion pack or the next DLC. You need to do this. You need to do. You need to spend more money. Unfortunately, Seth is right about the this. Standalone product today, it would play for you automatically until you reach a perfect 50 50 win loss ratio, regardless of your own skill. It would have gacha mechanics. Uh, they would be described as I hate it. reasonable. And I'm paid to write this article where 10,000 pulls grants you a single pity pull. Where? This, yeah, this is why I don't really read most game journalist stuff because most of them are actually literally paid by the company. <laughs> to write an article about it. You can pick it. out a loan at the press of a button to buy more gacha. And that little twig you throw is a DLC sold separately. I still don't know how to play Mahjong, though. I was trying to make. Get your car and go buy a 40-pound bag of rice. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Songs of Conquest. I adore this game and highly recommend it. If you're interested, follow my link for 30% off on GOG for the next 10 days. I think. I'm not sure. Huh? Yo, editor, clip this out. That's a joke. I don't have an editor. This is oh. probably the best discount and lowest price ever offered, so please take advantage of it. I'd like to say this is made possible because of my inflated ego, a mechanism of overcompensation for my <laughs> non-existent <laughs> self-worth. But in reality, and though it pains me to say this, the man who made this possible... I try our best to work with what the Polish overlords can do. ...is French. Oh. As always, more content <laughs> to come, so stay tuned. I guess he doesn't like my A warm thanks to the many members of Emergency. No one likes General the French or the English. The English don't like us either, but that's okay. Wonderful. Their opinion doesn't good. matter. <laughs> I do I just want to say this. The fact. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to say the fact that each one of the artificers, or, well, not the artificers, but the, the fact that they have a total. Yeah, the welders have a total of eight unique animations, and it turns up to 30 of them in total, which is insane. But when you love a game and you want to put as much passion into it, then yeah, when you shows. When you see passion, it shows with a lot of hard work. Like, as long as you don't get too into your own head about what you're doing and actually show real passion, and it's not just, you know, some, some indie devs get into their own head a little too much that they are just the best. Which is what happened yeah. with, uh, Yik. But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about this wonderful little game. I mean, who yes, wouldn't editor, want editor, edit this out. I don't joke. have an editor. I <laughs> wish I did. Then they could make funny jokes. I wish I knew how to edit in general. Um, yeah, no, this is a really good game, and it shows how much passion they had when making it. Yeah. Uh, also, Seth found the way to break the game entirely. Yes, and they're alive. Might, they might be patchy it even as he's talking now. How long was this video up? Two years ago. Yeah, they probably patched quite a bit. I still think it's hilarious how he basically said uh, that they're patching it as quicker than he can write the script. <laughs> and Seth, what are you doing? Yeah. But yeah, we need to support devs like this, because I miss games like this where we could just have fun instead of, like, paying every two seconds. It's, uh... Right. Eventually... The problem is, it, if those kind of games keep going on, they'll eventually kill the gaming market. It's what happened last time with video games, where they were just giving subpar products. Funny enough, they originally thought video games were going to become just a fad. I'm glad they didn't, but yeah. But yeah. Seth put a lot of work into this, and uh, I hope you guys like us reacting to this stuff. If you guys want us to react to a specific thing, well, tell us down in the comments, and we'll see you guys later. Make sure to like, comment, yeah. subscribe, and Fable right now is doing a 
what is it, a Dark Souls level one only playthrough. So if you want to go see his stuff, he should be in the description. And yeah, we'll see you guys yes, later. Yes, please pray for me. I'm literally stuck on the uh, Four Kings. Oh. They are kicking my butt right now. Oh, and I sick. might do the DLC. So, <laughs> so yeah, that'll yeah, be so fun pray to for watch. Me, chat. Thank you all so pray much. Pray for me, please. And we'll see you later.